G'day everyone, so I got asked a really interesting question which kind of sort of leads into my next upcoming video. And considering that I'm starting off with beginner stuff, I may as well start to talk about the problems of Veilpoint. Now, if you've come from doing, you know, whether it be fire, spinning, or just simple stuff like Poi, using a veil is a little bit different. A lot of people that have tried a veil for the very first time usually do complain to me saying it's a lot heavier, even though that yes, the material is indeed very light. And with using silk bamboos, material her stuff is actually quite light and very nice and fluffy as you guys probably would have noticed in all my videos but when you start to use veils uh, especially when there's going to be a lot of wind if it's outside it just you've, you've really got to use a lot more momentum in your movement so I am going to talk to you guys about some of the problems including hitting yourself in the head and getting caught uh, whether the poi veils actually be getting caught around your legs or on your arms um, and how to sort of deal with that if you are doing a performance. So let's get this ball rolling. I'm gonna take you guys outside to where I usually do my stuff and I'll show you how to um, deal with these problems with one veil and two veil. So as I said, we are outside and I have both of my veils. I want to be able to teach you guys how to untangle yourselves as well as being able to avoid hitting yourselves and losing the bells. Because it just so happens that a lot of the times I will actually end up losing my bells when I am doing a performance. So, start off I'm gonna do with one veil now one of the biggest problems is indeed tangling yourself up whether it be something like this um, and to simply do that uh, you just basically go in reverse speed which should untangle it if that doesn't happen you can just sort of bob it up and down try to get it out as much as you can um, usually people that have two veils like to swap over to the other veil and go with a single performance um, take note to which way you're spinning because when you get tangled up and you're doing it in a performance, you want to spin in the opposite direction. That way you've got the boy going out. So try that again. Yourself tangled up, spin in the opposite direction. And if you have this problem where it sort of all comes together, just sort of bob it up and down. Try to keep moving um, and avoid those sorts of problems. Now, let's say you're doing this, it's quite windy, it's an outside performance and you just so happen to get it all tangled up and around you like so. Um, I have this problem a lot when I am doing this in my toilet dancer and I have also picked up a piece of wire off the ground. Again, if you're, if you're outside doing this, you want to make sure that the area that you're doing it in is safe. Let's say you have this particular problem, it's going all over you like this. Now the best way to get yourself out of this mess, because you have one arm right underneath, you want to focus on using this other arm. Then again, you spin in the opposite direction as to what you're going. So if it's caught over like this, pretty simple, very easy. Pretty much the main basis is if you get caught, spin in the other direction. Now for two barrels, this is going to be really, really difficult. So I tend to do this a lot when I'm doing this particular move. Course, what eventually happens is you end up with the everything going everywhere and just getting caught and basically <laughs> the only way to get out of that one is to try and avoid from hitting your face. Uh, if you have a problem like this where it tangles up, just sort of try to untangle it as best as you can or um, go to a backup plan which is really good to have if you're having these issues, um, is having a backup plan or having both appels going into a single veil. Let's say you have that issue and one of your veils hits the other veil causing this effect. The best way to get out of this is basically, as you guys can see, you can't continue going off. Um, you can't really go backwards around. It's all over on this side and there is literally no point to go forward because of course it's getting tugged on the outside. Um, you can only basically try to get it off and go around your head. Um, you know, eventually go with something a little bit more like, you know, the whole cowgirl. However, if you are doing a spinning such as this, and one of your veils just so happens to catch on you and catch on the other one, the best way to try and get out of that is not going by that way. Um, I see that mistake a lot of time. Basically, try to go in the opposite direction. If you ever get caught with your veils on your body, try and move in the other direction. But if it's too tight, try to sort of loosen it and just move the other hand. 
Uh, of course, if that's just with one of your veils, then try to keep this one moving. That way you're distracting people. Um, <laughs> and they're not going to be noticing too much of this. Now, let's say you're having this issue um, where the poi ball and the veil are completely twisted up. This causes for the veil not to really flare out. Uh, the best way I deal with this is basically on the ground. It sort of gets it out there a bit more. Um, or, as I did in one of my other videos, is just bobbing it up and down, loosens the fabric, and you end up with it coming out a bit more. In the end, avoiding being tangled up is more about your momentum and moving your body in the opposite direction. Um, and of course, again, it's also about practice. I've practiced a lot with the bales, um, more so than I have with the actual poi balls. And I've become very used to getting tangled up with these. And it can be quite hard. There's like a whole heap of different things that has happened to me when I have been doing um, performances, especially with my Twilic. Um, might have had them, you know, a little bit like this. And for one instance was holding them in this arm, which you guys will see with my Tulip Dancer. The biggest problem is there's stuff in here to hold this and it ends up eventually, eventually coming off. Um, I did a really good save there, but you're not always going to get that chance. And the biggest problem um, is that when you are doing a performance and it falls on the ground in an area, try to have a backup plan. Always try and have a backup plan. Now to avoid hitting yourself in the head, especially with two veil poise, um, it's going to be a bit of a challenge. The best advice I can give for that is to mainly focus on uh, doing moves that you feel comfortable. Don't try and do advanced movements too fast because that was my biggest problem. Um, and like just, just go with the flow of your body movement. At times people will try and do movements like I do to try and experiment with creating a new movement and they often end up trying to do the butterfly move which is really great when you're doing poi but not so great with bales. Uh, butterfly is basically this and that often ends up happening. Now what ended up doing there was I just moved my head to the side to avoid it from hitting me. Um, I tried to keep my arms out as best as I could and that's basically the really best thing to do from avoiding hitting yourself in the head. So again, I'll show you guys how I sort of avoid getting hit in the head, um, but after a long time of doing these sorts of things, you'll often end up hitting yourself in the head quite a lot. And there's also another really good example of how to untangle yourself. Basically, you go in the opposite direction of the way you were spinning. Now let's focus on using one foot at the moment. This is what really helps a little bit. Trying to get that head confidence as well is one of your biggest things because you will end up hitting yourself quite a lot in the face and that comes that comes with you know practice it's not just you know you're not good enough it's just learning about your body movements because everyone's different in different ways however if in the case you are doing some juggling action based upon how i've taught it you more than likely will end up hitting yourself and the best way to avoid that is throwing up in the air if you can't reach it don't go for it another thing is when you are doing juggling sort of stuff with bales because it's not very common to do my best advice is to do it in an area that's going to be very wide in space um, and there's not a lot of people around and where you can easily just back away from it. Now let's say you have a little incident where you accidentally lose the point. Um, you may not be holding it in the actual proper area which you always should be holding up here in the tabs. I highly do recommend that for beginners um, but because I do a lot of spinning I find it easier to do it in the keyhole or keychain part as I call it. But on with the subject, let's say you're doing a spinning movement and you don't have the proper gripping on them, um, your fingers aren't in the tabs, you're more liable to lose them. So in cases like this where you're spinning, and you also have to lose the camera in the way, um, best advice, don't try and chase it. I've seen people where they lose it and they go, oh, and they chase after it and what ends up happening is when they chase after that particular veil um, they either get the leaks caught in the other veil or they end up running into someone and causing a lot of trouble. Yet again I cannot exaggerate enough for people to do things in a safe area where it's open space as you guys can see um, there aren't any sticks on the ground, there's no wire like there was previously, um, there's no people, it's a quiet area and when you're doing this in cosplay conventions and that, I'll actually get more into that with um, doing my Quora. 
um, <laughs> because it's going to be very, very interesting. Pretty much whenever you're doing bail poise spinning, um, whether there be people around or not, always make sure it's in a safe area. And if it is in a packed area, do it somewhere where it's not going to be dangerous and always inform people that, hey, this is what you're doing. You're going to be doing a lot of this. You're going to be doing a lot of this. Um, and someone might get hurt, so you just want them to keep their space. But for example, if you're doing a move like this, tiny A child comes along, running along, goes boom. Um, really, you can't do anything much about it because you have said to people, hey, let's keep a distance while I'm doing this. Um, you can, if you have good friends in security, you can have them you know, close by. You can just try, try and avoid your best, but there will be silly people out there that will try to run into you while you're doing particular movements like this and it can be very hard to deal with. So my best advice is always give warning, let people know what you're doing. Um, even if you just tell them the moves, you know, let's say you're doing this, you don't want someone to run in, that's like a giant and they hit the head. Um, it can be painful but because the actual koi ball that I'm using um, is a tennis ball, it's not going to hurt too much. But um, it depends on how fast you're spinning, if you're doing Obviously, it's going to hurt the poor man. Now, um, as again, I can only advise people to, when they're doing things, is you know, be mindful of their headspace as well as other people's space, and just try to do it in areas where you're not going to get caught. So again, <laughs> I hope this has been helpful to some people. Um, I know that I think it was Claudia asked a little bit about this. Basically, my best advice is to do it in the opposite direction. If you have issues like this, just bob it up and down until it's out and keep the other ploy, if you use an other ploy, uh, moving so it's distracting people. Um, basically, ploy is a very interesting art because it's very hypnotic and there are a lot of tips and tricks to avoiding people from noticing some of the flaws in it. It does take a lot of time, but my best advice to people that are starting off is just practice with the basic stuff. Work your way up until you feel comfortable doing other stuff and just go with the flow. So yet again guys, don't forget to like this video as well as share it with your friends. Um, feel free to make as many comments as you like. I hope it's been really, really helpful for those people that have been asking me about you know, how to avoid getting hit in the head. Um, yet again, I do apologize about aircraft because I am basically at the back of an airport um, so but please do thumbs up this video because it shows that a lot of you guys really appreciate the work that I'm putting into each video um, as well as comments and that really helps getting my videos out there a little bit more it's not so much about the popularity um, more so you know being able to show the beauty of Belle Poi also a tiny little announcement um, I have recently started up a Facebook page where I've been putting up all these videos and sharing other um, people that do Bell Poi videos so go ahead, check in the descriptions for that. Um, there will be a link there. There will be a link to a lot of other people as well, like Dana Buford, um, who created Bell Boy. And you know, it's just thank you guys so much for everything that you're putting up with me with. Um, I do hope to yet again do another video coming up with next week and um, starting off with beginner stuff. If you have any questions about Bell Boy, whether there's something you're doing and you want some advice on it, whether it be a particular move, let me know and I'll try to get around to playing a really, really easy way to teach you guys those particular tricks or moves. Thank you guys and don't forget to hit that subscription button for some more awesome Bell Boy stuff. Nice. It's a nice tip.